My dear students, today we are going to describe Bertrand Russell's essay, The Place of Science in a Liberal Education. In this essay, Bertrand Russell describes the scientific foundation of education or you can call it the scientific base of education and it proves that it is superior to art. This is describes and praises science because science has an impersonal outlook. It has an objective approach towards all experiments, which means that we are not personally involved or we do not add our personal view in the results. Some people think that classical literature is superior to science. Russell does not agree with this. Russell believes that the best classical literature which was Greek and Latin literature but which did not serve humanity more than science. He describes one defect of classical literature and that major defect is that it gives a lot of importance to past. It criticizes present and future. And if we follow this trend of art, we become blind to the achievements of the present. And we like to continue to think about the beautiful past, which is dead. And we are busy in praising the past heroes and we close our eyes towards the beauties of the present and necessities of future. Bertrand Russell further says that in arts we stress on the glory of past and we do not concern ourselves to present to the present and to the future. And there is a battle between past and future. And there is no effort to combine the benefits of both past and future 
develop a habit to appreciate the merits or benefits of present and Russell believes that this is due to the purely bookish style of arts. Here we must add that what is the end of education? What is the objective of education according to Russell? Russell answers this question and he, he writes that education is a combination of instruction and personal experience. That is how we learn. Russell describes the aim of education in a very interesting way. He writes that education develops mental habits and our approach towards the world, how we look at the world, this is what education does. And we all have instincts, we all have senses through which we understand, we feel. And here, the purpose of education comes into the question. And that purpose is to enlarge the scope of those senses and instincts. Which means that an education, that an educated person has a broad scope, has a wide scope of senses. He can feel more. He can have more impulses than an uneducated person. Russell emphasizes on natural method of education because unnatural method of education suppresses the nature of man. Russell believes that the innate nature of man is not bad. And education should not eradicate nature. Education should not stop our natural behavior. Nature supplies the force of desire. And that force leads us to achieve everything. But some senses, some impulses are temporary. They are temporary. And through our wisdom, we control them. And here the purpose of education comes 
into question. Education destroys the crudity of instincts. It polishes our nature. It makes us closer to the world. It makes us a citizen of the universe because an educated person sees the world in an objective manner. He rises above his own personal desires and he looks at the world with a broad and wide eye. Dear students, here once again we come back to the aim of education. Education, according to Russell, is the process of forming mental habits and developing our way to look at the world. And now, let us see how science is better than arts to fulfill this aim. One merit of science is that it is very hopeful as far as future is concerned. Science has always strong hope in future. Another benefit is that science gives no relevance to our personal emotions and passions. Science gives relevance to facts. If we compare it to literature, literature and art are always focused on past. And they are always ready to criticize the future and present. And in this way, science is superior because science believes in future, believes in present. And therefore, science is hopeful. Another difference between science and education, sorry, science and arts, according to Russell, is that in arts, we have to depend on genius to create anything new. We always need an extraordinary intelligence to create a new thing. But in science, the successors stand upon the shoulders of their predecessors. The successors S U double C E double S O R S and predecessors P R E D E C E double S O 
on as which means that the first idea in science of a new thing is always given by a genius he invents a new method but there are thousands others after him who are not genius but who add to that idea who polish that idea and no extra genius is required to have more discoveries for example here i give you an example from your second year book you must remember louis pasteur and how he gave the idea of making vaccines he was a genius to give that idea of making vaccines but he did not invent all the vaccines that we have today interestingly even in his lifetime many people joined him and many many new vaccines were discovered and this process is still going on so that means that new discoveries are being made without an extra genius because a genius person has already invented a method and others have only to follow his footsteps and discover more vaccines this is not possible in arts in arts you have to create new thing to genius galib did his work he was a genius but he after his death no one can add into his work we know, we want we require a new genius to create a work better than ghalib or equal to ghalib so this is the difference between arts and science so we are coming back to what russell says and he says that in science the man of real genius is the person who invents for the first time the new method and in arts always you need a genius to create a new thing a new poet a new writer no one can add into their work so that is a benefit lies that lies in science so coming back to science and our own desires the scientific methodology disregards our own desires our own tastes and our own interests for example aristotle who was a great man he believed that stars moved in circles and this was his view he was a great man but we cannot accept this today because we know through the scientific development that stars do not move in circles and it is because of people like galileo g a l i l e o who used scientific instruments 
and describe the facts. Russell praises Malthus' theory of population, although that theory is now proved mistaken. But what it gives to us is the method of inquiry. And that method is very scientific because that is not based on his personal views. Moreover, he gives the example of Darwin. Darwin, he gave his view, but today many, many people believe and they are influenced by the scientific attitude of Darwin. And here, Russell praises scientific attitude because science disregards hopes, fears, and emotions. And we see it as it is. Finally, Russell talks about philosophy and he writes that in philosophy, scientific attitude of mind has not yet been achieved. And philosophers try to understand the universe as a whole according to their own personality, which is not a scientific methodology. Until we learn to think of the universe in an objective way, we cannot study philosophy scientifically. This is how Russell thinks about philosophy. And finally, he gives a very hopeful conclusion and he writes that a life devoted to science is a happy life and it its happiness is derived from the best sources that are open to all the people of the world.